Hey folks, Sonic fan here, and today I am hacking lithium ion batteries. Yeah, and lithium polymer. I've been doing this for a long time, and I thought I'd share some of my knowledge about this with you all. First thing though, this is all at your own risk. These batteries are dangerous. They're flammable. They are not supposed to be hacked. So if you burn down your house, if you explode, whatever, if they explode and hurt you, uh, don't blame me. You are doing this all at your own risk. I am putting this information out there to assist people that, you know, uh, are okay with the risk. But full disclaimer, like, not my fault. I'm telling you right now, this stuff is very dangerous. It can kill you, burn you, burn down your house, whatever. All right, so now that's out of the way, I'll show you some of the stuff I've been doing. First and foremost, I just want to say this charger right here, which I have hacked with my own buttons because the original buttons and the, the fan were not so hot. But this uh, AccuCell 6... By Turnigy, amazing charger. Really the thing to have if you're working with lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries a lot. Uh, I put a little clear cover on this because the screen is like inside the case, it you know, stuff can fall in. And there's little things like that, you know, the buttons crapped out, the motor needs a little bit of grease. You know, those things are annoying, but this more than makes up for it because this is a full balancer and a charger which means that not only will it give, you know, 12 volts to these cells right here, which it's doing right now, but you see the individual wires here, it will balance each cell within the uh, the voltage of that cell is supposed to have. Let me try to turn this and I can show you. So right now it's, you know, telling you the, the current and it's of course a multi-state charger. And you see there, 3.92, 3.92. It's making sure that every cell is has got an equilibrium. It's got the same voltage and the same uh, power going to it, uh, which is great. Keeps keeps things um, lasting a lot longer. Because what happens if you just give 12 volts across this and nothing else, especially because I've actually got one of these uh, with only one cell. This pack originally had six cells, which is uh, three, so it's a series set of two each to make 12 volts. And one of the cells exploded. So I took that cell out. So now one of the series connections um, is only one cell, which means this is a totally unbalanced battery pack. I'm going to have to charge it with this every time, which is fine. But uh, balancers are awesome for stuff like that. Now, what I want to show you about this uh, guy over here is another battery pack that I made years ago. And this is actually the main reason I wanted to make this video. I wanted to show you some tricks about how to repair and replenish uh, your old hacked batteries or laptop batteries. Kind of give you a little rundown of what goes on inside these things. And... A little thing, uh, some things to watch out for too. Now there's uh, there's a bunch of circuitry in here you'll see, and a lot of battery packs like NiCads, nickel metal hydride, they don't have this circuit board here. And that circuit board is really important. Same one over here. It's a protection circuit board, and there's a special IC with some MOSFETs that controls the inrush current. Um, basically, the the input and the output current is controlled. At all, it also monitors the voltage each for each cell, which should not go over 4.2. Sometimes, some cases, they'll, they'll let it slide to 4.3. But basically, it tries to keep each individual set of cells down to 4.2. Really good ones, which like this one, will probably, I think this one also, will actually balance the cells as well. So they'll take that 12 volts, and then they'll run the current respectively to each cell and, and monitor each one. So depending on how good your, your battery is, you might have some pretty nifty monitoring circuitry. And, and a balancer built in, which is always nice. On top of that, this one also has an LED display indicator. And you can see it's blinking for one LED, which is, it's really, really low. Very cool stuff. Um, but there are some things you gotta watch out for with these. Uh, Texas Instruments makes one of the uh, most, makes all the most popular um, monitoring circuits for this. And some of their later models will basically have an EEPROM that it writes to. And if you disconnect the battery at any point, it will effectively kill the battery. It will kill the circuit board. Um, it, will, it will send information to the EEPROM and say, don't ever charge this battery ever again because it lost its full 12 volts, you know, or it went to below its lowest threshold, which is like nine volts. So in the case of something like this, it would actually have killed this battery because these three cells here, this one set, these are in parallel, uh, these died, these bit the dust. And fortunately, I don't think this this uh, this board in here is one of those uh, later kinds, which is nice, which is why I held on to this. But um, yeah, you have to watch out for that. And there's, there's a trick, though. There's a couple of tricks here that are kind of cool. So if you're you see here and it's got it's got your 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 uh, your different terminals being monitored, these thin wires are going to be your your monitoring 
terminals essentially. And you'll also notice here there is a really nice thermal fuse. Sometimes that'll be coated in some thermal putty as well. And then like here's your big thicker wire for your positive rail. Now, um, if you want to change the batteries out of this, let's say for if just for argument's sake that this is one of the ones that monitors continuously and you have to be really careful not to cut the circuit. Well, you can get out your trusty resistor box and get out some 10K resistors. And you might even be able to go uh, 4K7. Basically, you get, you get a couple of those resistors and I have here, you get your, your new battery, your new the new cells that you're trying to replace. And in my case, it's these, which I pulled from an e-bike where the motherboard died, but the batteries are all great. And what you want to do is uh, you get some resistors and you put them to these monitoring terminals, connect them to the monitoring terminals. So the microcontroller thinks that there's a working battery in there. And then you disconnect the old battery. And if you do it with 10K resistors, you won't have these two batteries fighting each other with current. And then what you do is you jump those 10K resistors and then remove them. And so that way you never have a battery out of circuit. That's the idea. So let me say that again. I said it kind of fast. So you take a wire from the positive, wire from the negative, 10K resistor to each respective positive and negative terminal, right? With the old battery still in place. Then with that resistor connected on both sides, the two resistors, disconnect the old battery, break the connection, throw it away, recycle it. Then you want a wire to jump and completely replace each of those resistors because now it needs to be a direct connection then you can discard the resistors. Follow those steps and you will be able to save a lot of batteries. And lastly, the other reason I'm wanting to make this video is because I found a little trick which is kind of obvious in hindsight. I never thought of it before now, but I realized that um, a lot of times when you're getting packs of batteries, they're connected in weird ways, like um, this these, these batteries from this e-bike. Um, this is more more batteries from the same battery pack more cells and you can see they're connected as like triplets and so if you're cutting those connections you got to be really careful especially because the positive terminals can short on the outer shell here which is always negative and it can be a real pain to get them in a neat row like this and as you can see here when this is all together there's no there's not a lot of space for wiring across the top to connect each of the cells so i found a little trick and that is using some copper foil which is non-insulated not insulated on both sides it's adhesive and you can uh, cut it and, and then just solder it across like that. You have a nice high current wide trace connection on both sides. Yeah, sure, it doesn't look the prettiest, but it's gonna work really well, um, basically like stock. And the reason why you have to do that is because when these are made in the factory, they're actually spot welded. There's actually a video on YouTube of somebody, somebody making a spot welding gun for these, which is kind of cool. But um, let me try to show you some different ones. You can see over here these little these little points here. Try to get my camera working a little better. Well, this camera's not focusing. There we go. But there's those little points right there, and those are actually spot welds onto the battery cell. And you know, this is all you know pretty customized stuff, and you have to have you know you have to have a welder for that, which I don't. Most people don't have. So a nice solution is to use this stuff, and you just cut it. Um, probably experiment with different thicknesses, but I think it's more important, it's less important the thickness and more important that it's a very, very wide trace because that'll carry the high current. And um, I mean, if you want, you can do all the calculations and stuff as well, but um, this should work out pretty well. I'm pretty confident in this. Um, the wide traces, by the way, will carry more current than smaller traces, thinner traces. So uh, that's why it's important for batteries. So I'm gonna cut these off, of course, and then I'm gonna do that trick, get these in there, and this should be all working. Now, ideally, I would replace all of these cells with new ones and blah, blah, blah. That's a lot of work, though. And this is going to work just fine. I don't need it to have maximum capacity. I just need it to be like a decent battery that I can run a portable sound system on, which this will very definitely will do the, do the job later. Also, uh, if you want just a cheap uh, connector solution is I just use these Molex connectors. They're less common now, now that native, ugh, nowadays that SATA stuff has taken over, but... Um, there's still, these are around and they're nice cause they're high current capacity. Um, even though, you know, at the time they were designed for like two amps or something, they can carry much more than that. And I just do the two center pins negative and the two outer ones positive, And I use that for all my 12 volt battery packs. 
So, uh, yeah, and I always, uh, I'll ask, uh, closing thoughts, um, lithium ion is usually my preferred cells. These cells are a lot safer than the lithium polymers. These will swell and explode. Um, if they puncture when they're swollen, there's a poisonous gas that I do not recommend inhaling. And, uh, these are, yeah, these are a lot more of a pain to work with and just way more fragile. That said, they're much lighter weight. These are, this is the lightest weight, uh, battery cell, I think still available, lithium polymer, super, super lightweight stuff. So these are a little more, you know, a little heavier, but they're far more durable. And so nowadays I pretty much use these for everything except for portable applications where weight is a significant issue. And this one being already ready to go, I'm just charging it. I'll probably use it at least temporarily before I, while I finish this, but I um, highly recommend these. These are much safer. And um, again, as I said in the beginning of the video, um, working with these kind of batteries this way is, is dangerous. You do have to take precautions. Um, you can hurt yourself burn your place down. Um, as a rule of thumb, I never, ever charge homemade battery packs ever unattended. Always, always, if you're using this charger, you're doing stuff like this, be home, be nearby, be attentive. And if you can, you know, really try to get the uh, thermistors in there like this one has, where it will actually measure the temperature and um, disconnect the battery. If there's a problem, also um, fire safety, you know, always have a smoke alarm and I do have a fire extinguisher close by my charging station. And usually this is actually very rare, but I will charge on um, concrete or ceramic tile. I will not usually charge on carpet like this. I'm just doing this while I'm sitting here right now because I'm keeping a close eye on it. Um, so those are my, my safety tips and precautions. Have fun hacking, be safe. And uh, that's it for this video. Uh, feel free to leave some comments or ideas if you have like things that you want to contribute for lithium ion and lithium polymer battery hacking uh, tips. And um, there's some interesting videos out there too. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff I might put in the description later. Uh, as usual, I don't care if you like or subscribe, screw all that stuff. Uh, I just want to make videos that make people happy. I don't make any money off this and I don't have a brand. Well, I guess I do have kind of a brand, but I don't know. I'm not all about that marketing, self-marketing stuff. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'm just trying to give back to the community. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.